Hi, I'm John Rafrano for Boris TV, and welcome to the Boris Continuum Complete for Vegas Pro Training Series. In this episode, we're going to take a look at transformations and animations. I'm going to show you how to use transformations to take and offset your text, and then by some simple animation, you can do things like this rotation. Let's start by creating a new project. I'm going to insert a video track, and then an empty event, and we'll apply the extruded text to this empty event. Go to Boris 3D Objects, Extruded Text, click OK. We'll wait for it to load. Once it's loaded, we'll click Launch Text Window and type in our word. And we'll wait for that to render. Now, the only thing I want to do to this is just put a material on it so you can see it a little better. So I'm going to put the, uh, the blue plastic material we're using in the example, and then we'll move down to transformations. Now, the first thing I want to do in transformation is I want to use the master scale so that I can see all of this word on the screen at once. All right, so I've just scaled it back a little. You do this quite often. You use a large font uh, in the text editor uh, because larger fonts give you a better extrusion, and then you just scale the font accordingly in your uh, project. So we're going to start off with uh, the X, Y, and Z orientations. Now, it's important that you understand what X, Y, and Z stand for. Uh, so, what I've done is I've created a little overlay that I'm going to put on here. And that overlay shows us what the X, Y, and Z directions are. X being the horizontal, Y being the vertical, and Z going back in uh, depth. So, it's going straight back from the screen back. Uh, so let's start. If I was going to uh, rotate or orient something around the x-axis, it's just like there's an axle uh, you know, across the front and it's going to rotate on that axle. So watch when I move this, how it rotates around that imaginary x-plane. So the x is going to make this thing just tumble forward and back. The y, likewise, there'd be this imaginary pole going up and down the center and it's going to rotate around that pole. So the orientation around the y, as you expect, is swinging around that imaginary y-axis. And then because the z-axis is in the center just going straight back, it's going to spin like a propeller as I uh, orient or rotate it around the z-axis. Okay, so that's x, y, and z. And what I'm doing is I'm double-clicking uh, to reset these. Whenever you set one of the uh, parameters to any particular value, you can just double-click on that, get it back to zero real quick. Now, the next set is rotate on the x, y, and z. And when I rotate on the X, it tumbles forward just like Orient did. When I rotate on the Y, it spins on this imaginary pole like uh, Y did. And, and when I rotate, it spins around like a propeller just like Orient Z did. So you may be asking yourself, what's the difference between orientation X, Y, and Z and rotation X, Y, and Z? And the difference is in the, actually the word orientation. Orientated to what? Orientated to a pivot point. And down at the bottom, is the option to lock the pivot to the position. So the pivot point is locked by default. But we can unlock that by unchecking this. And now we can open up pivot X, Y, Z. And instead of the pivot point being in the center, I can move it off, let's say, to the left side. Now I'm going to come back and redo my orientation on the Y. So now the pivot point is here. And it's going to swing on the Y axis, given this pivot point. And now when I move it, it's like a barn door. All right, it's swimming back and forth. Let me hold down the uh, control key to get a little more control over this. Uh, it's swinging back and forth on that pivot point. However, when I say rotate on the Y, it's still rotating around the center. So the difference between orientation and rotation is that orientation is always with respect to the pivot point. So if the pivot point's in the center of the object, then they do the same thing. But when the pivot point is not in the center of the object, then you can get some interesting effects. I'll do the, I'm going to move the pivot point once again. I'm going to move it up to the top this time. Uh, and if we look at uh, rotate on the X, you'll notice now that it's swinging back and forth like a sign in the wind, swinging on the X axis, uh, but based on a pivot point that is up above. So let me double click on these. I get them centered again. So th that's what you can do with the pivot point. Uh, let's combine these two and show you how you can be creative with this. 
So what I want to do is use the rotation and orientation in different ways. I want to rotate this uh, 90 degrees, actually minus 90 to get it go in that direction, minus 90 degrees. And so I'll just type in a minus 90 rather than trying to hit it. Um, and then I am going to change the orientation and watch what happens. Now it's moving around, but it's moving around that pivot point. Okay, so, so now I almost have this object going around in circles like uh, you saw in the original uh, animation. Now something's happening when I move it uh, closer to us, we're getting, it's getting very dark. So I just want to adjust one of the lights uh, really quickly. We are going to have a, an episode on lighting, uh, but I just want to open up the light and I want to take the Z on this source light and just move it a little bit All right, so that it's lighting it up all the way across. That's all I wanted to do. Uh, but I'll show you more about lighting in another episode. So now that I have it uh, moving, and what I want to do is I'm going to zoom this uh, master scale down a little bit, just a little bit smaller, and show you this orientation, right? So now it's going around this, this uh, axis over here. Uh, so what I want to do is I'm going to use the camera uh, to reposition ourselves. Let me zoom it up a little too small, zoom it up a little more. Um, and we will have an episode on using the camera. Um, but I want to use the camera just to zoom out a bit. Matter of fact, I want to position the camera out a bit. And I want to position the camera over towards the middle. Actually, it doesn't have to be that far out because I zoomed out. Uh, and now I'm going to add the animation. We're going to add animation on this y-axis. And the way we add animation is fairly simple. Uh, we just click any one of these animate buttons and then the animation timeline comes up. Uh, so I'll just make this a little smaller here. So on this animation time frame we have keyframes. So this first keyframe has the initial value uh, which is zero. And then I want to go to the end of the animation and I want to make that 360 for one rotation. So I can click uh, last keyframe. and In this case it'll go to the end of the timeline. And then I want to change this to be 360. So I'll just type in 360. And then we'll hit play. And we'll see there's the text animating 360 all the way around. Now one of the things that I did to make it a little more believable was I added a little bit of bend. Uh, so I went down to this bend deformer, and uh, we will have an entire episode on deformers. I just want to show you this bend taper twist. Uh, and I added a little bit of strength to the bend to bend this back a little bit and increase the radius. And so now let's play it and see what we got. So now it's just a little bit curved, and it looks like it's rotating around some imaginary object in the center. And then to get the final effect on this, I went back to the camera. Uh, so let's go back to this built-in camera. And uh, let's, let's get it rather close. And we'll position it over a little more so it's more in the middle. And then all I did was I rotated the camera a bit. Oops. <laughs> and that's how I got that transformation rotating in space that way. Okay? A little bit of animation, a little bit of camera moves. We're going to cover lights and camera uh, in a future episode. Okay, so let's go back. Let me reset this. I'm going to reset my camera. I'm going to take off my bend because we're going to look at the rest of the, uh, the features here. And put my camera back in the middle. And then we'll go back up to... Um, We'll lock this pivot point again and continue with. And as soon as notice, as soon as I clicked off animate, the timeline went away uh, because there was no more animation uh, keyframes, and so there was no need to keep that animation timeline up. Okay, so we're back to the original transform. Let's look at what the rest of uh, of these things do. So we looked at. Orientation, we looked at rotation, now we're going to take a look at position. We can open up the position indicator here and we can move this to the left, right, up and down. So it's just positioning this uh, on the screen. Double click it, it goes back to the middle. Z will position in the Z space. Notice the Z space is going back away from you. And as I 
go into the Z space, you see it come closer and further away. Now we have another set of controls called pre-rotation position, X and Y, uh, and pre-rotation Z. And there's a difference between these, and let me show you what that difference is. Pre-rotation is going to work in the object space with object coordinates relative to this object. And position in the Z space in X and Y are called world coordinates. That means regardless of what direction the object is in, these will always be in the same coordinates that I have up here on my screen. So let me show you how this makes a difference. And if I take and move this in the Z position, it goes back. If I do this pre-rotate in the Z position, it goes back. But watch when I change the orientation. If I orient it to the side just a little bit, and again, let me use my control to get better. Okay. So now I've got this facing a little bit this way. So for the object, the Z is going to go off. And let me do it just a little more so you can see a little more. It's going to go off that way, right? Because going straight back for the orientation of this object would go off that way. However, straight back to me is still back in space. And that is now the difference between these two parameters. So let me show you. When I move it in the Z, it goes back in the Z space according to world coordinates. But if I now take the pre-rotate position and move it back, it's going back in its own object coordinates. So it's pushing the object back in the direction the object is facing. So the object would come closer in that direction or go further away in that direction. And that's the difference between position and pre-rotate. The reason this is called pre-rotate, and let me, uh, let me just check this orientation back, is because you can change the rotation and when you use the pre-rotate, it won't be affected by rotation, right? It rotate, it, it's pushing the Z before it rotates it. So rotation does not have uh, any effect on this, but orientation does. So when I orient and I move it back on the Z, it's moving back in the Z space of the object. If I move back in the positional Z, where it's world coordinates, it just moves back in space. Okay, so that's the difference between those two. We've seen the master scale. This brings the entire object up or down in scale. Uh, and then we can do the scale X and Y independently. So I can scale out X. Remember, X is along this wide axis. I can scale along Y and make it taller. And I can scale along the Z and make it deeper. Um, you don't want to use this to increase the extrusion, right? Because scaling this along the Z is going to also scale uh, the bevel and everything. So if you just wanted to scale the extrusion, you would use the extrusion parameters. Uh, but this will allow you to change the X, Y, and Z uh, of these objects. Uh, the next parameter here we have is opacity. And that is going to affect how transparent uh, these objects are. Now, it's tough to see against this black. Um, how transparent something is getting. So let me show you a little trick that I do. I'm going to collapse these uh, tracks by double clicking over here in the, uh, in the, in the bar. And then I'm going to insert uh, another video track. I'm going to drag it below these two. Uh, and I'm going to insert generated media and right click. And, and I apologize, insert generated media is off the screen. So let me do it up here. Insert generated media. And I'm going to go to the Sony checkerboard. And I've created a preset in Checkerboard that I call Transparent Background. And it looks like the transparent background you'd find in Photoshop or other applications. And all I did was create a preset that was 192, 192, 192 to get that nice gray. Uh, and then I changed the width uh, to 0 0.0150. And I saved that as a preset that I call Transparent Background. Now that I've got that nice transparent background back there, um, we can play with the opacity and really see how this thing is getting opaque. Uh, so that kind of helps me when I'm working with these uh, 3D objects, especially with transparency, understanding exactly uh, how opaque uh, I've made something. Okay, and then we're back to uh, the pivot position. So that wraps it up. Hopefully you have a good understanding of transformations, and if you need more information, drop by BorisFX.com. This is John Rafrano for Boris TV. Until next time, thanks for watching.